This video is made for deck officers who are working on the tankers or scheduled to join soon. Now let's take a moment to imagine this together. The lower the cooling water temperature and the faster the cooling water flows through the cooling tubes, the greater the impact on the internal pressure of the condenser. Therefore, when it comes to creating vacuum pressure inside the condenser, the temperature of the cooling water is something that cannot be ignored. Hear that? That's the official signal. Part three is over and part four is rolling in. Now let's take a look at the design capacities of the COPT and the vacuum condenser. The ejector on this vessel is capable of creating a vacuum pressure of minus 570 millimeter height gravity. Interestingly, this vessel can also achieve a 570 MMHG vacuum, even though it's a different model. This particular COPT has a design capacity of 540 MMHG vacuum. Another COPT is rated for 600 MMHG vacuum. And yet another model also reaches 600 MMHG vacuum. This one goes up to 680 MMHG vacuum. And finally, this model can achieve 720 MMHG vacuum. If you take a close look at each piece of equipment, you'll notice the specs are labeled by the manufacturer. This vacuum condenser, for example, is rated at 760 MMHG vacuum. As for the COPT, its design limit for exhaust vacuum pressure is 720 MMHG. Basically, you can think of these numbers as the maximum limits on paper, what the equipment could handle under ideal conditions. I'll go over how to operate the COPT in a bit, and when I do, it'll be helpful if you keep those numbers in mind. On ships, there are usually two types of condensers installed, vacuum condensers and atmosphere condensers. What we've been talking about so far is the vacuum condenser, but since we're on the topic, let's go ahead and cover the atmosphere condenser as well. Once we've gone through that, I'll move on to explaining how to operate the COPT. When operating the COPT, you're dealing with high speed, high pressure, and large volumes of steam. Because of that, using a vacuum condenser is absolutely necessary. It's the only way to maintain proper vacuum and ensure stable performance. But when you're running the stripping pump, it's a bit different. In that case, we use an atmosphere condenser instead. After the steam passes through the stripping pump, it gets cooled down in the condenser and turns back into water. That condensate is then stored and reused later as boiler feed water. So basically, high demand systems like the COPT need a vacuum condenser, while lower demand setups like the stripping pump can get by with an atmosphere condenser and even help with steam recovery in the process. The steam used for the stripping pump is relatively low in volume, so there's really no need for a vacuum condenser. An atmosphere condenser is more than enough to handle the steam coming out of the stripping pump's exhaust line. Now, in terms of appearance, the atmosphere condenser looks pretty similar to a vacuum condenser. But the big difference is it doesn't use an ejector. It's just the main body of the condenser cooler, and it relies on cooling water alone to condense the steam. All right, that just about wraps up this part of the explanation. So how are we doing so far? Hopefully things are starting to make sense. Man, was that an explanation or a brain workout? My head hurts so bad, I swear the earth might explode any second now. Ha ha, just playing, but not really. Whoa, feeling dizzy and totally out of it. Yikes, what do we even do at this point? All right, all right, pull yourself together. Let's keep it moving, shall we? <laughs> I mean, seriously, I can't even... I'm laughing because what else can you do, right? <laughs> anyway, thanks for hanging in there through that long explanation. You've done well. And hey, if this masterpiece of a drawing ever ends up getting sold by some world-famous artist, I'm treating all of you to coffee at that fancy place everyone talks about. You know, mm, Starbus, or mm, whatever it's called. My treat, one cup each. Don't get greedy. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Whoa, okay, that joke might have gone a little too far, huh? Ha ha, all right, we've had our laugh. Now let's get back to business. All right, now we're finally getting into how to operate the COPT. Up until now, I've gone over a bunch of background info. All of that was to help set the stage for this part. So here's what we'll do. We're going to walk through the operation using a hypothetical scenario. Let's say the vessel has arrived at the discharge port, fully loaded with cargo. And for this operation, we're planning to run all three cargo pumps, number one, number two, and number three, at maximum capacity. Once the vessel has completed mooring operations, the very first thing we normally do is tank gauging. At the same time, the terminal team usually starts connecting the Chicksan arms or cargo hoses. In most cases, the hose or Chicksan arm connection actually gets finished before the tank gauging is done. It tends to move faster, and as soon as the tank gauging is complete, we move straight into cargo calculation. And unless the terminal has some special schedule going on, once the cargo hose or Chicksan arm connection is complete, we usually have a quick safety meeting with the terminal staff. Happy birthday! Then, Merry right after Christmas. that, they'll often ask us to start discharging as soon as the cargo pumps are ready. Even though, get this, we haven't even finished the arrival calculation yet, ideally, we should confirm the arrival <sighs> quantities and wrap up the cargo calculation before starting any discharge. But sometimes the terminal staff are in such a rush they keep pushing like they're racing a clock. Sigh. But hey, what can you do? We just try to keep smiling and cooperate as best we can, right? When we arrive at certain ports, things get crazy fast. They rush everything, no time to breathe, no time to think. Sometimes, right up until we start discharging, it feels like we're being pushed nonstop. Honestly, it gets Come frustrating. On. Like, seriously frustrating. But hey, uh, what can we do, right? We just have to smile through it and keep going. Now, if that kind of work environment really isn't for you, well, You've got two options. One, find a better paying job that lets you chill a little more. Or two, hit the jackpot and win the lottery so you can stay home and relax all day. Either way, yeah, good luck with that. In an environment this busy and frustrating, sometimes the best thing you can do is just smile and handle it with a bit of grace, right? All right, tank gauging is now complete. The cargo hose connection looks like it's just about wrapped up too. Give it maybe five to ten more minutes, and it should be done. Now, this is your moment. This is where your quick thinking, or even your sixth sense, really comes in handy. It's time to bring out that sharp instinct of yours. Let's see what you've got. At this point, after getting the green light from the terminal, go ahead and open the tank suction valves and the pump delivery valves. This will allow you to fill the cargo lines with fluid. Once that's done, Give the engine room a call and ask them to start warming up cargo pump turbines number one, two, and three. Now, here's a reference clip. And I've got to say, this ship's operation speed looks just about right. All right then, let's check out what the real conversation sounds like between CCR and the engine room. Thank you. Hello? Yes, second engineer. Please warm up cargo pump turbines number one, two, and three. We'll be starting the discharging operation shortly. All right, are we using cargo pumps number one, number two, and three? Yes, we'll be using all three. For now, please keep the rolling RPM between 100 and 200. Also, please get the IG system ready. I'll give you a call again once we're ready to start. Copy that. I'll get everything ready right away. Once that call ends, the engine control room will go ahead and start up the boiler right away. After that, the watchkeeping engineer will open the control room door, head out, and manually open the steam main valve. Then comes the fun part. He'll rush over to the COPT area and start the warm-up process. That means opening the warm-up valves next to C, OPT number one, number two, and number three. Or, in some setups, slightly cracking open the steam main valves on each turbine to begin warming them up. Strangely enough, some ships don't even have warm-up valves at all, so just be aware of that. And on ships built with more attention from the ship owner, you won't see this old-school routine where someone has to physically go out and open or close valves by hand. Everything is fully automated. From the cargo control room, you just push a button. Warm-up, start-up, all done remotely. Honestly, if they just invested a little more during construction, this level of automation could be standard. But sadly, ships like that are still pretty rare, and that's a real shame. 
All right, now the engine room has finished all preparations and all three cargo pumps are warmed up and running at around 100 to 200 RPM. They're ready to go. But here's one important thing you should never forget. Make sure the pump delivery valves are properly closed. And of course, the manifold valves should be closed too. Don't let the rush make you forget something this critical. No excuses. No oh excuses, my God. don't forget. Come on. No, no, no excuses, excuses. Don't, don't forget. Now even if there's a delay on the terminal side, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, even 30, don't worry about it. It's really not a big deal. When we say the pump is running at 200 RPM, let's be clear. That means it's only spinning 200 times per minute. That's really slow. We're talking just three to four revolutions per second. The impeller is barely turning. It's just gently spinning. Honestly, I don't understand why some people get so nervous about this. What's the big deal? Still feeling stressed out about this? <laughs> then hey, why not just open the drop valve for a bit? Seriously, I wanna give you full confidence here. There's really no need to be anxious during the cargo pump warm-up phase. Let that worry go. You've got this. Once you've reached this stage, all you have to do now is wait for the terminal signal to start discharging. Now, the benefit of having the pumps in this warm-up state is that you're ready to go at a moment's notice. As soon as the terminal says, start discharging, you just give the engine room a quick call, and the watch engineer can simply open the main valve on the COPT. From there, the system will ramp up to the preset remote RPM, around 600, in no time. That's the beauty of being prepared in advance. If you skip the warm-up process, then when it's finally time to start, you'll have to go around opening each steam valve one by one, and that's going to cause delays. No way around it. As you know, once discharging begins, a lot of people are on standby. Ship crew, terminal staff, maybe even SPM operators, and the refinery control room. They're all just waiting. And let's be honest, no one enjoys sitting around waiting. So for your sake, for the ship's sake, and really, for everyone's sake, it's Come always on. better to stay a step Show ahead. Time. Take it easy, stay prepared, and have everything ready before the clock starts ticking. That pump! It's not gonna bite! Get it ready ahead of time and you're golden! No stress, no mess! Just be smart and stay cool! Come on, it's just pump, not a rocket launch. If you get things ready ahead of time, Thank you've you. got nothing to worry about. All right, now the ship is fully prepared, all pumps are in warm-up mode, and we're just waiting on the terminal's go-ahead to start signal. And then you hear it, that voice cracking over the walkie-talkie. Motor tanker, Uncle Charlie, terminal's all set and ready to receive. You can start discharging. Roger that. Starting now. Okay, we've got the green light. Let's get started. Open the manifold, then call the engine room. Chief Engineer, please bring up cargo pump number one, number two, and number three in order to remote RPM 600. Copy that. Getting it ready now. Everything's been going smoothly so far. Each step is falling right into place. Now, the cargo pumps are ramping up one by one to the remote setting of 600 RPM. All right, let's take a quick look at the reference footage. All three cargo pumps are now up and running at 600 RPM. From this point on, start opening the delivery valves, about 10% at a time for cargo pumps number one, number two, and three. Gradually bring them to full open. Once each valve reaches around 60 to 70% open at 600 RPM, you can fully open it from there without any issue. At that speed, going from 60% or 70% to 100% won't really affect the manifold pressure or the discharge flow rate. Once you've checked the entire cargo line, including the pump room, and confirmed there are no issues, you can begin increasing each pump's RPM step by step until you reach either the requested discharge rate or the terminal's maximum allowed manifold pressure. 
In this case, the terminal has asked us to bring it all the way up to the maximum RPM the vessel can handle. All right then, shall we start ramping it up? Let's go. Part four completed, to be continued in part five. Everything we've covered so far was to help set the stage for what's coming next in parts five and six. So be sure to watch parts five and six. They'll bring everything together and complete the picture. Uh. Yo. Yo, listen up, crew. Let me break it down quick. COPT, yeah, that's the main trick. If you're standing watching the CCR, you better know the system or you won't get far. Steam's flowing heavy, turbine on blast. You miss one step and you might not last. But don't stress out, you'll catch the vibe. Once you get it down, man, it's a smooth ride. Know it, learn it, yeah, that's the key. COPT, knowledge set your mind free. If you're here right now, that's no mistake. Uncle Charlie's got your back. For real, not fake. At first it's tricky, yeah, a little complex. But once it clicks, it's like what's next? Vacuum, stripping cargo, flow control. Master the system, that's the goal. It ain't just tech, it's skill, it's pride. When you're in the zone, it's a heck of a ride. And trust me, bro, it gets more fun. Once you understand how the whole thing runs. So lucky you clicked, lucky you stayed. Knowledge like this. It never fades. Uncle Charlie's here, showing the way with more cargo vids dropping every day. From pumps to pipes, from steam to tank. This ain't random, you got skills to thank. And before I go, just remember this. Hope you find joy and lifelong bliss. So stay sharp, stay kind, and let it show. Wherever you are, may happiness flow. One crew, one fam, one global Thank team. Keep learning, keep growing, chase that dream.